Hi, and welcome back to Yogi's Garage. I'm Yogi. Behind me is a 1995 Mercedes-Benz E320 wagon. If you've been following along, great. We're catching back up with this car. For my new viewers and people who've just happened to stumble on my channel, welcome. I'm just an ordinary guy who works an ordinary job and I love to work on cars. I started my channel about two years ago almost and I've been working really hard to get some content out there that you folks will appreciate. I've been working on a 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera, so be sure to check out those videos. I also rebuilt my Audi A4, AKA Olaf, under Project Olaf, so be sure to check that one out as well. I'm putting a pause on my Porsche project, so for my Porsche fans, please bear with me. I know you'll find some useful information out of this one, because I gotta pull the engine out. So let me get you up to speed on what's going on. So October of last year, I purchased this car from a friend he stated that he was having some misfire issues, so I figured it was a wiring harness problem. Drove it home. Long story short, it ended up being compression problems in cylinders six and five. Upon further review, I found bolts, yes, bolts on the intake side of the cylinder head, big ones, big ones that couldn't make it through the valves. I thought I was lucky, However, when I stuck a scope down into the cylinder, I could see that several bolts did indeed make it into five and six, subsequently got pulverized and destroyed the engine. The car runs and drives, but on four cylinders, so it doesn't really do all that great. I love this car. There's a lot of people out there that love the wagon styles of Mercedes. This is, in my opinion, a classic design. It's a tank. The engine, for those of you who know about Mercedes-Benz, the inline-six engine in this car and the M104 inline-six was used throughout this model generation and even into the next year because it was such a tank of an engine. Unfortunately, any kind of engine, regardless if it's a tank or not, cannot have bolts or foreign objects in the combustion chamber, so the engine got destroyed. Luckily, recently, it took me a few months, but recently, a couple of weeks ago, I managed to find an E320 inline six motor at my local junkyard for a reasonable price. And I picked it up and drove it over here. So that's what this story is about. The story is about me going out there and picking it up, driving it over here and planning an engine replacement. Online, I tried to say it was an engine swap and I got the smack down from a lot of viewers saying it's not technically a swap because a swap in the engine swap community means that I'm replacing the engine with something different, like an LS swap, for example. So not quite a swap, but it is a replacement. And I think it's gonna be very interesting because I'm basically resurrecting this car because if I didn't do that, this car would have been recycled for parts and we would have never seen it again on the road. This is a great car and I'm here to save it, like everything else I do in Yogi's Garage. So new viewers, welcome. I hope you enjoy it and you find something useful. Usually I have my wife, Yogi Mama, come out here and help me out. She provides some comedic relief as well as anything else that I may need like getting parts or taking care of the camera and things like that. So I hope you enjoy it. For my loyal subscribers, welcome. Like I said, Porsche content coming in. I'll mix it in with some of this, but it's Mercedes-Benz content now, so I hope you enjoy it. Behind me, I've got some starter parts in here, oil pan gasket, cylinder head gaskets, in case I need to swap the cylinder head gaskets, but I don't think I do. Looking over the, the replacement engine, there is no seepage around the gasket. In fact, the gasket looks pretty new on the cylinder head, so I think I lucked out there. But nevertheless, I got bolts and gaskets and seals and stuff for the valve covers and things like that. So just typical maintenance stuff, a belt, I'm gonna get me a new belt, all that stuff is gonna happen to this car but I'm trying to keep the costs low. <laughs> Cue the lap track. Yeah, thank you. As much as I can in today's market. <laughs> the market is all over the place, but right now I think it's the best thing to do is to just swap the engine out or replace it. Sorry, didn't wanna offend you. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I am a little lax on reminding viewers that come to my channel to like and subscribe because I'm sure you guys hear that all the time. But let me give you some insight for those of you who don't know. The like and subscribe buttons do something with the YouTube algorithm that helps put my videos up into the feed so new viewers as well as existing viewers 
can see that when they're scanning for something to watch. So it's very important that you do that because it shows YouTube that you're interested, you liked the video, or even dislike it actually helps me, believe it or not, but don't dislike unless you really want to. And the subscriber, of course, is what I'm really looking for. Once I hit that thousand subscriber milestone, it's gonna open up a whole bunch of opportunity for not only me, but for you as the viewers, because then I can start recommending tools, parts, vendors, things like that, that people often look for when they come to YouTube, like myself. Take Project Farm, for example. If you wanna know whether or not a tool can work better than, a, than an, another tool that may be cheaper or more expensive, you would go there, but people are looking for that type of information. And when it comes to strictly automotive work, people are also looking for, hey, what kind of tools do you use? Do you use Milwaukee? Do you use Tekton? Do you use blah, blah, blah? That's what I wanna do for you. But I'm not incentivized to recommend that. So when people ask me offline, I'll recommend it. But I'm not gonna give companies free advertisement on my channel unless I'm compensated in some way, whether they're sponsoring my channel or they're providing me tools that I can review on my channel as well. So like I said, like and subscribe, we'll get there, be some awesome giveaways. I have a lot of plans going on for the 1000 mark on my channel. So be sure to smash that subscribe button. Okay, let's get to work. Is Center there, me on the shot. Yeah. I'll worry about the exposure later. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. All right, I am at uh, Fuentes Used Car Parts and uh, I'm getting a new engine for Gunther. So I rented a trailer here and I got a tire there for the engine to sit on. I just hope it fits. You know, it's four foot wide. I think the engine will fit, but it has motor mounts on it. So we may have to take those off or turn the engine the other way. But uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty cool. I'm finally making some progress. It's been really hard to get an engine for an affordable price because, you know, the way the market is. And uh, I turned it over, I cranked it, I scoped the, uh, the cylinders to make sure that there's no bolts in the engine this time, and so far, so good. So what we're doing here, we're waiting for them to pull the engine out, and then we'll slap it on the trailer. It looks a lot bigger when it's not in the car. Yeah. You got it the timer? Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're gonna try to put it on this side. The center or the front? Uh, more center this way. Oh. Good, good, good. Down. You should get all the way in there, Hunter. Good. Shit, bullseye. All right, engine's in. Not in, engine's in the trailer. <laughs> We're ready to go. And uh, we got about a 22 mile drive, not a big deal. And we've got ratchet strap going across here and a ratchet strap going across here. So it ain't going anywhere and it's sitting on a very expensive tire. thing was sitting only on this strap. That hop must have did it. Hey. But it held on. Putting it on a tire was a really smart idea. Putting it on a tire was a really smart idea. Putting it on a tire was a really smart idea. It'll hold it. I'm not concerned about it holding. Except for that. Looks like you gotta get that thing to move a couple of feet. Yeah. Watch out behind you. 
Careful. You're staring me right in the face. Now, Hunter, just uh, hook it in there, man. On this? Yeah. All right. Here it goes. Yeah, hang on to that wiring harness. Let me do that. Drive forward. We'll leave it here like this. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks to my son Hunter's help, we got this engine here. I'm gonna lower it down because I think it's already kind of lowering by itself. <laughs> These Harbor Freight lifts are kind of iffy. So anyway, I'm gonna put it down on a tire, and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do. But you can clearly see it needs a good bath. So. Okay, we're back with this engine here. I'm gonna make a list of some of the things that I need. I've done some preliminary evaluations on this car. I've checked the oil, I pulled the dipstick. Of course, I scoped it when I was at the junkyard before I even bought the engine. I looked at only one and six. It gave me a good idea of what the, in the inside was gonna look like. And of course, I cranked the engine over before anything. I made sure that there was good compression and I got a good resistance from the engine when I was doing it. So we're looking good. And another thing that's also a positive is I'm looking over the mating between the cylinder head and the engine block. And I'm not seeing any seepage from the cylinder head gasket. So that tells me that I don't need to pull the head and replace the gasket or anything like that. Of course, I'm gonna give this thing a bath. I'm gonna pull the flywheel off this thing, pressure wash the heck out of it to get all of this grime, which is really just dust and sediment from it sitting for so long. Oh, look, I get a free hose clamp. Bonus, that's good. These pulleys here don't seem all that bad. That look, just looks like superficial rust. I suppose that a quick Wire wheel would probably take care of it. But some of these, like this one here, is pretty bound up. So I will replace that. I know I said I wouldn't rebuild or work on another engine while I'm working on Pepper over here, my Porsche. But I'm still waiting on the engine and I'm still working on the interior. So there's a lot of things going on over there, but I have I want to run two projects parallel so I can attract more viewers. Obviously, that's the, the name of the game, what I want to do. But again, the initial review of this looks really good. But I'm not going to know for sure until I clean off a lot of this dirt and check all the gaskets to make sure that we're not leaking. But of course, obvious, the obvious ones that I'm going to do will be the thermostat. I know that the power steering pumps are notorious for leaking. So I'll make sure of take, to, to take care of that as well. But yeah, let's get this thing up in the air and uh, pressure wash it. What do you think about that? No, I'm having it. Um, oh yeah, good idea. Okay, I got the flywheel off, off camera. It was as simple as uh, hitting the crank with uh, a, wire, a wire wheel it's a good thing I did uh, and I took that thing off because clearly this old girl, or actually it can be a boy now, this old boy needs a new rear main seal along with everything else. As you can see here, it's almost mating season. So let's finish this up and get this engine on the stand. Okay, so it is now mated. Ooh, that was a nice thrust. <laughs> Again, this is a family channel. Well, you should see it from the angle I'm looking at. <laughs> All right. Son of a bitch, I'm in. Yeah. Okay, so now let's drop this girl. Soon to be a boy. Okay. All the wheels are on the ground. All the wheels are on the ground. Everything seems to be okay. It always makes me nervous when I put the engine, a fully assembled power unit 
on the stand because it's like so heavy and a lot of the weight is way over here. I mean, I suppose this leg here helps with that, but still you're only talking four bolts holding the whole engine in the air. Makes me nervous. That seems better. Certainly cleaner than it was. It's still pretty wet, so it's hard to tell. But, you know, rubbing my hands on the plastic and on what's left of the paint on this magnesium valve cover is pretty good. Wiring's cleaner. You can clearly see that this is a biodegradable wiring harness and the fabric is pretty wasted. So, some of the wiring harness has been cut as well. I believe this is the lower wiring harness. So I'll be pulling that from Gunther and putting that in there. So yeah, you, you, get in there soon. I think I got really lucky on this engine because it is in really good shape aside from the obvious places where it would leak, which is the rear main seal as well as the oil pan gasket. I think that's leaking as well. Nothing on the cylinder head, so that's really good. I'm gonna pull the valve cover and check the timing on it, of course, before I go any further. And then I'm gonna scope each one of the cylinders and try to do a leak down test to make sure that uh, I have compression. So this car, like I said, five and six are dead, dead cylinders. Spark, yes. Compression, no. Everything else in the car is okay. There are some wiring harness problems here as a makeshift uh, adapter that I created out of some uh, pin jack banana plugs. I did a video on that as well. It's very, very dirty. The cylinder head is leaking in the back. And um, I thought that's what I was gonna do initially when I initially scoped it, but it is what it is. So it doesn't look that bad getting the engine out of here. I'm going to disconnect it from the end of the manifolds and not from the manifold itself. That'll make it easier to get all of this components out of here. And, and this is what I'm replacing it with. Hey, look, it looks the same as the other one, right? That's because it is. Um, and I've got tires that I need to find a home for. So you can tell that I'm running out of room in here in my work area. I'll probably have to move the tires out of there so I have some more work. There's my cart. And then here's Project Pepper, my Porsche 911, which is right over there. So if you haven't checked out my Carrera content, be sure to do that because it, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. I replaced and repaired the rust, replaced the carpet. I'm doing a whole interior refresh and of course, no engine because the engine's being bored out to a four liter from LN Engineering. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start the breakdown procedures and I'll set you up on time lapse and we'll get this going, huh? What do you think? Let's do it. All right, I think I'm gonna stop right there. I think it's a good place to stop. It's a quick 20 minute video to get you introduced to what the project plan is. And then in the next video, I'm gonna do the actual takeout. So I'm really hoping to get this knocked out in about four videos. So we'll be doing the intro, engine out, part swap, and then finally engine in and starting it. So with that being said, like and subscribe, new viewers, I hope you enjoyed it. 
Loyal subscribers, we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check, give it a microphone, I make them make it a microphone dead. 